So as I was asking the Lord what he wanted the body to learn tonight, I wasn't clear the first time. Before I ever give a word, I want to make sure I have absolute clarity because it does you no good if it doesn't come through from the throne of God. So I asked him yesterday and I thought I heard him say, I want you to teach on protection. But I want to get clarity again. So I asked him today, early this morning, and he said, I want you to teach on protection. As the times are getting strange, and as we see uncertainty everywhere, as a believer, you must understand that you can call on God's protection at any given time, at any given moment. It is your birthright through Christ Jesus. He paid that price so you don't have to worry. And I want to go to the word sozo from the Greek. And the word sozo means to be safe, to be cured, to be insured of salvation, to get well, to be made whole, to be restored. And that is a very important topic for the kingdom. And it was very important to God because it's repeated 200 and, 200, 274 times in the word. It's very important for you to know that you have a wholeness in your spirit. You have a wholeness in your soul, your mind, will, and emotions, and you have a wholeness in your body. It's a complete, total healing of your mind, your body, your soul, in your spirit. It hits on every level. That's what Jesus Christ paid for on the cross. Salvation is mostly one dimensional in the church, but it's multi dimensional when you understand what it's paid for. Salvation is paid for everything that I just mentioned, for everyone that believes. So, the greatest prosperity that you can have in this world is to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. His economy is more important than any dollar that you ever put in your hand. His transaction of the covenant is more important than any house, any material possession that you could ever own. Because his economy is a spiritual economy and not a physical one. A spiritual economy goes much further for you than any natural economy that you could ever have in your life. And one of the economies that Jesus Christ paid for was protection, protection from every demonic force that could ever try to come against you. It doesn't matter what shape it takes. Many people are walking around completely demon uh, oppressed and depressed and, let's say it, possessed. But that should not affect us one iota if we know the truth and the truth has set us free. We have promises in the word of God. And the greatest promise that God has ever brought to mankind was his word. His word 
has the answer for everything that we will ever face in our life. And it is so important for us more than ever before to study to show ourselves approved. So when these adversarial things come against us and the mountains look too large to climb, we can go to the word of God and find a promise for it. And God wants everybody worded up, understanding whose children they are, and what authority they walk in. You have the same power and authority that Moses had when he departed the Red Sea. You have the same power and authority to call down fire from heaven and to watch the altar lick up all the water from the prophets of Baal. You have the same authority to laugh in the face of all the gods that try to come against our Holy One. But how many of us truly operate in that? God is saying, wake up. I've given you everything you need for victory. It's in my word. All you have to do is open it. And when you open it, the Holy Spirit will begin to reveal to you those truths, those promises, so you don't have to live in fear. You don't have to live in doubt. You don't have to live in worry. You don't have to live in pain and frustration. Because Jesus Christ paid for it all. Psalms 91 is the greatest passage of scripture for protection that you could ever want to memorize and learn. Let's read it, shall we? He who dwells, that's us. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall remain stable and fixed. I'm using the Amplified Bible because I really want to get clarity on what these things mean. A lot of times we read passages of scripture and we just shoot it out of our mouth so fast, we really don't know what it means. So if you don't know what it means, how is it going to benefit you when you need it most? Because what do we always read? He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. That's very ambiguous. But if you look in the Amplified, it says to remain stable, not moving, not wavering, solid, planted, knowing that your God is a God that has set you upon his rock. And when he sets you upon the rock, it is unshakable. And that's why the devils yell. That's why the devils scream, because they know nothing can come against the rock of our salvation. And that's why it says in the Bible, even the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So when we know that we're stable and we're fixed in the secret place of the shadow of the Almighty, whose power, whose power can withstand the power of Almighty God? Who can stand in the awesome power of God? The devil can't even stand in the power of God. The angels, many of the angels have wings that cover their faces because they can't take the awesome presence of God. It says in the Bible that no man has ever seen God and live. That's the power that we can harness because it belongs to us through Jesus Christ. 
When Jesus sat down at the right hand of the Father, his work was completed. He's never going to do another thing except come back and redeem us. It's our job to pick up the mantle. And he's waiting, sitting at the right hand of the Father, and he's saying, did I not tell my people when I was with them that I gave them all the authority to operate and live in victory? What else can I do? I've already given them everything that pertains to godliness and holiness. It's your turn. It's our turn to pick up that mantle and exercise the authority that's been given us. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God on him, I lean and rely, and in him, I am confident. Trust means to be confident, to know that your God is working for you. But did you see in that passage of scripture that I just read, it was activated on what he spoke. He said, I will say, had he not spoken it, the refuge in the fortress of his God would not have been his. Because he did not take his God-given authority. But because he said, I will say, which means I will declare a thing as done. Every time that you say the word amen, it means so be it. It's finished. There's no more um, confusion. There's no more doubt. There's no more worry. There's no more fear. When you say it, when you say amen, you are saying to God, it is done. So be it. So be it, God. So after you say and you declare these things, then God says, for he then will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and the deadly pestilence. It's all faith operated through your voice. Your voice and your heart being assured and not wavering, brings God's faith into the earth to operate on your behalf. Two things are required. Unwavering faith and taking your authority with your mouth. Look at the prophets, look at the patriarchs, look at anyone that ever walked in power and authority they declared a thing from their, their lips. They didn't just think it. They spoke it. And they believed it. So when you speak it and you believe it, you are delivered from the snare of the fowler. You are delivered from deadly pestilence. No sickness, no diseases. What's it say? You can drink any deadly thing and it shall not harm thee. And Paul understood that. That's why he shook the adder off into the fire because he knew, he knew his authority. And God is saying in this hour, it is time that we use our authority. The world is not getting better, people. It's getting darker. More corruption. Anybody that's telling you that the world is going to get better is lying to you. It's not going to get better. 
Will we survive? Absolutely. Will God have an outpouring of his spirit? Absolutely. Will there be revivals? Absolutely. But the world as a whole is not getting better. And that's why God is saying, remnant, oh, remnant, wake from your slumber and take authority over the earth. Because the more authority you take over the earth, the less authority the devil can use. See, the devil knows his time is short. That's why he's summoning all of these people that work in the dark arts to speak curses and diseases and sicknesses and fear into the earth. What are we doing? We're laying in our beds. We're not, we're not combating it. We have to start combating what the dark forces are doing. We have to stand in the gap for our brothers and our sisters that don't understand authority and power and faith. We have to contend. Because what does he say? Those that contend with you shall contend with me. But how do we get God to contend with those? We have to take a proactive stance. We can't become passive and say, oh, God will just do whatever he wants. No. God wants us to take authority and get activated in the war. Get on the front lines and start taking your authority. And when you do this, he promises you protection. Because you believe that you are protected. You're not going to go into a war and start combating all these evil forces if you, if you don't believe you have a shield of protection around you. That'd be stupid. You're just opening yourself up as a sitting duck to take all these blasts at your head. But when you start taking authority over situations, you're telling God, I believe that I am protected. And that's how God knows you're serious. Because whatever a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. And God wants us to take the war to Satan right now. Because if we don't, the world's going to keep getting darker and darker. We, this, this generation of souls, I mean, this generation of believers is responsible for this generation of souls. And if we sit back, these souls are perishing. But hallelujah, once you understand your authority, he will cover you. He will cover you in his wings and you will find refuge in truth in his faithfulness. And he will be your shield and he will be your buckler. Nothing will be able to harm you. You will not be afraid of the terror of night, nor the arrow, the evil plots and the slanders of the wicked that fly by day nor the noisy pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the destruction and sudden death that will surprise and lay waste at noonday. This is a passage of scripture I quote all the time when I'm going into buildings or when I'm sending my child into areas that have disease and sickness. I always say this over, over her. Though a thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, no plague, no pestilence, no diseases shall come nigh my dwelling. 
Do that the next time you go in a contaminated building. Watch God move on operated words that are speaking faith. And you'll sit back and you'll say, wow, I didn't get the flu this year. Oh, oh yeah, that's right. Duh. I was speaking the word of God. I believed what I was saying was coming out of my mouth was, was really going to take effect. And it will. But it gets better. There shall be no evil befall you or even come near your tent. It won't even come to your doorstep. All calamity and all plagues. What is the world saying right now? Oh, there's going to be so many people that are going to die in 2023. How many people have you heard saying there's going to be massive bodies just dying everywhere? Are you going to are you going to buy into that? Even if there is a plan to depopulate the world, speak against it. Say, okay, it may happen to you, it may happen to you, but it ain't going to happen to me. Because I'm going to take authority over it. I don't care what the 5G tries to do to me. It ain't going to have any effect on me. I don't care how much poisons they're putting in my food. I'm not going to receive that poison. I'm going to bless my food. And I'm going to thank the Lord for keeping it healthy for me. Words have power. And if you believe those things that you're speaking, these things will not come upon you. And you'll see people falling out everywhere. And you're going to be like, wow, if only they had what I have. So whatever the world is trying to promote right now, speak contrary against it. Don't listen to it. Shut it off. Turn it off, because all it is is propaganda in fear to get you to not operate in your faith. If people are speaking fear, turn it off. It's not going to do you a bit of good. That's a seed that the devil is going to use to come against you, and you're going to have to battle it until you get victory over it. Anybody that's ever had a spirit of fear come upon them, they know what I'm talking about. A spirit of fear does is relentless. It stays on you. So don't give any seed to allow it to come up and to spring up in you. If you're listening to all this stuff, you're giving fodder to the, to the spirit of fear to come upon you. Be careful with what you say, because the spirit of fear is listening to you. The reason why a great many of you are getting woken up in the middle of the night and getting jumped on by fear, is because what are you promoting in your life? What are you focusing on? Are you focusing on the word of God? Or are you listening to so-and-so tell you, that this is going to happen this year. Oh, there's going to be an earthquake. Oh, there's going to be a famine. Oh, there's going to be a flood. Oh, World War III is coming. Russia's at the borders. Shut it all out, man. Because our God is greater than any of that. And our God, and even if these things are coming to pass, you don't think your God can protect you? He protected Shabak, Reshak, and Abednego in the fire. And they were in the fire. They were already in the midst of a tribulation. But they believed their God. And the angel of the Lord appeared and protected them. And everybody around them burned except them. That's who we serve, people. Just because they try to put us in the midst of all of this stuff doesn't mean we have to partake of it. We are pilgrims. 
in a strange land. We are not of this world, so let's quit acting like we are. So he says, <laughs> he will give his angels charge over us. He will charge a company of angels over us to defend and to preserve us and to keep us in all of our ways of obedience and service. And he shall bear, and they shall bear you up on their hands, lest you dash a foot against the stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and the serpent shall you trample underfoot. Because he has set his love upon me. When you love something with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your might, with all of your strength, that is the greatest level of trust that you can give someone. When you love somebody, you are telling that person, I trust you. When you truly love somebody unconditionally, you are opening and you're exposing yourself to them to do whatever they want. But because you trust them emphatically, you know that they're not going to harm you. It's the same with God. God wants us to have that degree and level of love for him where we just open ourselves and say, God, I trust you no matter what it is. I'm in your hands. I'm in your care. The world could be falling down all around me. Everywhere could be unsettled, but I know who's God. You, I, I, know, I know who I am. I know who I am in you, and I trust you completely. Watch what God will do in your life. Because he says, hmm, he will deliver them because of the love that you have for him, he will deliver you and set you on high because you understand and you know his mercy, his love, his kindness. Trust relies on knowing who he is. And when you know who he is, you will love him unconditionally he shall call upon me and i will answer him i will be with him in trouble and i will deliver and honor him with long life and i will satisfy him and show him my salvation did he not just promise you long life there so if Plagues start happening everywhere, and people start falling out. Did God not just promise you long life right there? Believe it and receive it. The reason why the Hebrews were spared and the Egyptians weren't, because the Hebrews believed God. And God brought them a deliverer. Pharaoh didn't believe in Moses' as God. And they were in self-destruct button. Self-destruct button. So people that don't believe in God, they're, set, they're setting themselves up. I would not want to be in this world right now and not have a solid foundation in who my God is. But because I have the strong foundation and I know who he is, I have no fear at all of what's coming upon this earth. I could care less. All I care about is allowing God to use me 
to win souls for his kingdom. That's all I care about. If we're more concerned about our father's business, we won't be concerned about what's, what, what, what the father, the devil's doing in the earth. We won't have time to even focus on any of it because we'll be so busy about doing the kingdom work. We won't give a foot a foothold for the enemy. Look what happens when you believe God. Ezekiel 38 and 39. A big place given to Rosh, which is Russia, and in times prophecy, Meshach is Moscow. They will come down to invade Israel. Their armies will be destroyed by God himself on the mountains of Israel. Why? You remember that covenant? You remember that covenant that God made with Abraham? God didn't go back on his promise. Most of the people in Israel don't believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God. They are waiting for their Messiah. But because Abraham made a covenant with God, God still honors that covenant that Abraham made. And that's why their armies will be destroyed. Did you make a covenant with Jesus Christ? So, if Israel will be protected from Russia, from Moscow, and anybody that comes in to evade, invade them, right? And they don't even believe in the Messiah. What's our covenant mean? Do we not have a greater covenant than what they got? And yet God is still going to protect Israel? And most people don't believe that Jesus Christ is the Messiah? They're waiting for him to come? We have the covenant already. We know who our Jesus is. So if he's willing to protect those people that don't even believe in his son, how much more protection do we have? And yet people don't get it. People don't see it. Let's look at Ezekiel 39. And you, son of man, prophesy against God. Thus saith the Lord God, behold, I'm against you, O God, chief prince, ruler of Rosh, of Meshech, and of Tubal. And I will turn you about and will lead you on and will cause you to come up from the utmost parts of the north and will lead you against the mountains of Israel. And I will smite you. Bow from your left hand and will I will smite your bow from the left hand and will cause your arrows to fall out of your right hand. You shall fall dead upon the mountains of Israel. You and all your hosts and all your all the people who are against me. I will give you to the ravenous birds of every sort and to the beasts of the fields to be devoured. You shall fall in an open field for I have spoken, says the Lord God. That's what he's going to do for Israel. So what's he going to do for you? Were you not grafted in to the fabric of Israel? Are we not Israel? Amen. We are like, we are likened unto Jerusalem. Look at the word Jerusalem. Does it have the word USA in it? Yes, it does. It does. We are grafted in. We are grafted into the word, even Jerusalem. God even knew that the word Jerusalem was going to have USA in it before people even realized it. So God wants you to believe, believe receive and believe amen the first mention i'm i'm starting to wrap it up now genesis 4:18 the first mention of god most high 
as well as the first mention of Holy Communion, which was the bread and the wine, is in Genesis 17. The first mention of Almighty God is in Genesis 5, chapter 15 and 16. We will find out what the secret place of the Most High is right now. When Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am the Almighty God. Walk and live habitually before me and in perfect blameless, wholeheartedness, completeness. The Most High God gives a kingdom to whomever he chooses. Humble yourself before God. Put yourself low so that you fear no fall. You won't fall if you're low. You only fall when you're high in pride. When you're low, you can't fall because you're already on the ground. And God will raise you up. God will raise you up. Melchizedek, the king of Salem, later called Jerusalem. Salem is now called Jerusalem. Brought out bread and wine. The first time we see the Holy Communion is in Genesis 14, 18. Melchizedek, the king of Salem, later called Jerusalem, brought out bread and wine for their nourishment. He was the priest of God Most High. So, what is the secret place? The secret place is walking and living habitually before God, blameless and complete. And when we do these things, then God offers us the bread and the wine for our nourishment. Do you have a secret place? Do you have a secret place? So Melchizedek, the king of Salem, later called Jerusalem, brought out bread and wine for their nourishment. He was the priest of God Most High, and he blessed them and said, Blessed, favored with blessings, made blissful joy by Abram, by God Most High, possessor and maker of heaven and earth. So what happens when God gives you the bread and the wine. He blesses you. He blesses you with nourishment to do what he wants you to do. The bread and wine is a type and shadow of the body and the blood of Christ in the Old Testament. And when we eat the bread, and we drink the wine, we have the nourishment and the sozo for everything that we need for protection and grace. And lastly, this is going to be like a introspective thing for you. As I mentioned, sozo is a Greek word meaning wholeness. It's a wholeness in your spirit, a wholeness in your soul, your mind, your will and emotions, and a complete wholeness in your body. It's a complete healing for body, soul, and spirit. Sozo is a gentle and effective ministry led by the Holy Spirit bringing us into greater truth, into greater intimacy with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Then in all respects, we would prosper and be in good health, just as our soul prospers. 3 John 1, 1 through, 1 through 3. What does it just say? It says, 
we will prosper, be in good health, and our soul will prosper. Hallelujah. So I want you to take down these bullet points, and I want you to get alone with the Lord in your secret place. And I want you to ask the Holy Spirit these things. One, pray for the Holy Spirit to break areas of unbelief or strongholds in your life. Number two. Pray for truth, the truth of his word to be established in your innermost being. As Carol said, without the ammunition inside of us, we can't fight a war. You have to have the ammo of the word in you. So pray for that truth of his word to be established in your innermost being. So when you need it most, it is already there inside of you and you can call it into action. Number three, pray for a greater intimacy with the Godhead. Number two, ask the Lord. And I'm not saying this to everybody. Some people do this and some people don't. But when you do this, I feel you get a closer connection to the spiritual realm. Ask the Lord if he wants you to fast. And, for so, and, and if so, how long? And what does he, what do you want me to fast, Lord? Do you want me to fast food? Do you want me to fast an activity? Do you want me to fast my time? All of those things. Every one of these things can be a fast. It doesn't just have to be food. Number three. Relax. We forget to relax. We get so busy telling God our, our list that we forget to relax. You know, when you show surrender, that shows that you trust the Lord. If you relax, that means you trust the Lord. So learn how to relax. When you do these things, number four, meditate on God's word. Did you know it says in Psalms 107, verse 20? He sent forth his word and healed them. He sent forth his word and healed them. Second Corinthians chapter three, verses 16 through 18 says, whenever anyone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Now the Lord is the spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we who with unveiled faces all reflect the Lord's glory and we are being transformed into his likeness with ever increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the spirit. After you meditate on the word, ask the Lord, show me your glory. Show me your glory, Lord. Show me who you are. We need to know 
who our God is, not just by words on a page. Everybody needs to experience the Lord for themselves. Because through experience, you position your heart more towards faith. Because there's an actual representation right there for you. Ask him to see his glory. His glory could show up in a myriad of different ways. I'm going to show you how the glory of God showed up this week. There was a lady in Pakistan that was in a coma, a 15-year-old girl on her deathbed in the hospital. And this girl contacted me and said, you're a man of faith, right? I said, yeah. She says, would you pray for my daughter? I mean, would you pray for my sister? She explained the whole situation to me. And she said, well, I hope she gets better. I said, no, no. Correct that thought. Hoping something is fear. You have to know that it's done. So three days went by, still in a coma, nothing was happening. She's ready to give up. I said, no, we're not giving up. We're going to pray this through, and you're going to see the miracle hand of God touch your sister. Her sister went home from the hospital today, completely healed from her swelling of her brain. That's the God we have. That's the God we serve. And that, my friend, was the glory that showed up. So God can show you his glory vicariously through many different ways. It's not always about you receiving the experience. It's allowing God to show you his glory however he wants to show it to you. And you recognize it for what it is, and then you give him the glory for it. And that girl said, I can't believe it. My sister's coming home from the hospital today. I said, I can believe it. That's what I was, that's what I believed. And that's what we were standing in the gap for. And now that lady that wasn't operating in that level of faith because God showed up. God showed his glory to her sister. You bet your sweet bottom dollar, that girl's faith level, her faith quotient just went up leaps and bounds. And God wants to do that in each and every one of us here. And my last point, Nothing. Hear me carefully. If you want God to move on a high level in your life, you must forgive everyone you know. You must forgive everyone you know. Because it says in the Bible, if unforgiveness is in your heart, God will not hear you. Your prayers will not be heard if there's unforgiveness in your heart. So you've got to let go. You've got to let go of anyone that's ever hurt you or harmed you. You got to let go of the prison of torment that you've allowed to play out in your mind over and over and over. Many of us as Christians, we've built prisons, not out of walls, but we've, we've, we put our mind in captivity. We've personally put ourselves in prison. And God is saying, I want to do a great work in each and every one of you, but you've got to forgive. You must forgive those that have caused you to become bitter, that have caused you to have anger. When you have bitterness, when you have hatred, when you have 
uh, anger in your life. It blocks the fullness of God from your life. Many of you say you want to walk in a great power and authority, but you're not willing to forgive. And God is saying it's time to let go of every hurt that you've ever had. And when you do these things, when you extend forgiveness, it does the following things. It relieves you from the burden of having to carry it. Why do you want to carry it? It's unfruitful. Nothing good comes of it. It will weigh you down. And it will bring destruction in your path. You are freed from the prisons of torment. From the walls that you've built up. And most importantly, it closes the doors which allowed the enemy to have access to you in the first place. So let's choose to give grace. Let us put the people that have wronged us and harmed us. Let's put them in the hands of the Lord and allow the Lord to do with them what he will. Because we're not supposed to seek for vengeance. Oh, that guy, if I could just, eh, eh. No. God says vengeance is his. So let's put them all in the hands of the Lord. And allow God to be their judge. Let's finally step out of the way. And allow God to have a direct line to that person. For if you forgive men when they sin against you, Matthew 6, 14 and 15, your heavenly father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their sins, your father will not forgive your sins. Matthew 18, 21 through 35. This is the story of a servant who was forgiven a huge debt he could not pay, but refused to forgive those who owed him. His master tells him, shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had on you? In anger, his master turned him over to the jailers, the tormentors, to be tortured until he should pay back all he owed. Did you just see that right there? When we don't forgive, we allow the tormentors to come in and torture us. This is how my heavenly father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother from your heart. God will move himself away and allow you to have what you say. And the tormentors will come in. Forgiveness is a command from the Lord. Forgiveness is not a choice. It's not a feeling. It's a command. Love your neighbor as yourself. If you love your neighbor as yourself, you will forgive your neighbor. Because you forgive yourself. So you have to extend that to them. Jesus said, because Jesus freely forgave all of our sins and paid a debt we could not pay, we must also freely forgive. Forgiveness is vital to deliverance and freedom. Forgiveness will allow sozo, the complete ramification, the complete broad, the complete scope to work in your life. Forgiveness is the key that unlocks everything that Sozo has for you. And that's how we stay protected. We keep forgiving our brothers and sisters that have wronged us to allow the Sozo 
to operate fully in our life so we do not have to walk in fear. We don't have to walk in shame. We don't have to walk in doubt. We don't have to walk in confusion because we know our Lord God has protected us. Amen. Amen. Amen.